Tony D and Little Joan in the background, and this is a screenwriter's rant on History of Evil, a horror movie with a lot of politics in it. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys, books 1 through 13, available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. Um... Here's the thing. Horror and comedy are very similar. And they're similar because you want to create surprise. In comedy, the surprise is funny. In horror, the surprise is shocking or scary. So when you add additional elements of politics, you end up undermining that a lot of times. Unless it's a very familiar kind of politics maybe like for instance um although it didn't appear to be good um you know love love craft country sounded like an interesting pitch at least i said that when i looked at the trailer i said oh this could be good because it was not only a group of characters in the segregated south fighting monsters but they're also fighting racism or whatever that could really work be, because it's a it's a world in which we sort of understand this does a double and even triple duty on being woke i think now it's from shutter and normally they don't do this kind of thing but apparently they're going for it and they're, they're they're going head first into uh woke heart so um the, the setting is a different world. So you're already in a, an area that you, you've got to explain that world and you've got to make it feel very real. So this is a world in which a theocratic government, it's fascist, has taken over the United States. And that already sounds like super preachy. Super preachy and super stupid because it's not going to happen. Like, we couldn't be further away from that now. <laughs> There's literally a guy who, who is being charged with a hate crime for knocking down a statue of Satan. But you think, you posit a world in which uh, a bunch of religious nutbags take over the United States and force everybody to swear on the Bible wherever they go. This is that scene. You can see the Bible on the iPad there. He's got a swear on it. Um kind of wrong time yeah definitely the wrong time not exactly people aren't exactly uh jumping in the churches these days um so on top of that uh the premise sounds pretty cliche because you've got the fascist government which we used to do these kinds of movies in the 80s oh it's a fascist government and then there's the resistance but, you know, that was 40 years ago, man. The resistance, the idea of the resistance, I mean, that's pretty generic. You know, if you're going to do politics, at least, I don't know, make up some new names. Use something other than the resistance, you know, or apply it differently somehow. But, okay, so now they're in the resistance and... So they're hiding from the fascist government because they're so evil. And they go to a safe house and they're waiting for an extraction. And I know this because uh, they say it in the trailer. And then because there wasn't enough data in the trailer, I like actually did research for once. So I was looking for synopses of this movie. And instead I found article after article announcing it. And I was like, why are there so many articles announcing it? And why does every freaking article sound the same? Well, it sounds the same because apparently, um, and this is from Screen Anarchy, History of Evil is the first project under a pack between XYZ Films and Two and Two Pictures to discover, develop, and produce projects from first and second time genre filmmakers from underrepresented demographics. So, not only is this movie, in my view, extremely unrealistic, 
sound also sounds super woke. Um, apparently, DEI is the only reason it even got made. According to this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. Underrepresented groups. Yeah, I know. I know when I was watching the trailer, I was thinking to myself, well, this is okay, but is the director from an underrepresented group? Sorry, blowing up here. Um, you know, I'm just not thinking that. I don't care. I want the movie to be good. I want the trailer to be clear. And it kind of wasn't. So what has happened in the trailer is uh, they're hiding out in the resistance, waiting for an extraction, which I read in every friggin' press release. And uh, while they're waiting for an extraction, which is a military term, I don't know if resistance fighters would even use that term. How about escape? How about how about other words that people would use uh, because these people aren't in the military? Oh, but the people who wrote it, I guess, heard that word once on television, so they decided to use it, maybe? Anyhow, they're waiting for an extraction, and uh, while they're waiting, because, you know, it's a low-budget movie, and you got to keep them in one spot, um, they, they realize they're in a haunted house. Okay, so they're in a haunted house, but they can't leave because of politics, which isn't necessarily a bad pitch, except you have to explain this all, whole new world and how it works. And it's not going to feel real to the audience. It's not going to feel real. Well, should they be waiting? Would not, wouldn't you just leave and go? And why do you got to wait for this extraction? You know, if there's so many people looking for these people. Why don't they just, you know keep moving what what good does waiting do other than you know it helps the movie so there's some sort of evil in the house and try as I might I can't figure out what the evil is I can't figure out there's some kind of ghost I guess that that you know lived there before the country turned into a fascist theocracy so I was trying to determine whether or not they went even further back to slave times and made the ghost from that era, which kind of would line up, I guess, except it really doesn't <laughs> because we don't live in a theocracy that's run by fascists and won't, not in the way you think anyway. If you had done this from uh, uh, the, the leftards and their wacky politics, um, maybe, maybe you could draw those interesting analogies and that would make more sense because we do live in a world in which, you know, there's a pseudo religion of wokeness being impressed upon everybody. And if you don't say the catechism, you could lose your job. You could be canceled on YouTube or, you know, called all sorts of nasty names, smeared publicly. It's kind of like a religion because there are heretics, right? You don't say the catechism, you're a heretic, and you're ousted from the community. And see, that analogy brought into the future would be interesting. You falling back on the same old tropes of like, oh, yeah, we got we to gotta worry about these Christians. Yeah, you know, the guys who have no power as their churches are being shuttered one by one as they're constantly denied their rights. Did you see what happened during a certain uh, medical emergency when all their places of worship were shut down? They weren't allowed to worship, even though you know, they believed in that, that their literal immortal soul was in danger by not going. Even though we have uh, things in place in this country to protect that. Oh, but we don't protect it when everybody's upset. Anyhow, and you might say, oh, you're getting awful political yourself. The movie's political. It's pushing politics in my face poorly, in my view. And uh, it's, not, it's not particularly clever or interesting to me. So let's break down the three acts. First act, they're in the resistance. They got to get to this house. And they did. Second act, oh, the house is haunted. And now you got to stay there. They want to leave, but they can't. They got to wait for extraction. And as the evil continues to grow, they want to leave. 
but there are people looking for him, and uh, uh, they can't. So, in the end, I don't know, they're probably forced to leave. And do they get away? <sighs> Could go either way. Can it go either way? You know, it's a horror movie, so you could have an ending where everybody dies. Kind of depressing. But, you know, there's a little kid in the movie. I don't think that's going to happen. I think somebody survives. Um, but again, because you have this pseudo-reality, that doesn't even comport with a the next logical step in the current reality we live in. You know, when we were talking about a dystopia in the 80s, you could talk about a dystopia like this, and that would ring semi-true. Because we did have a bunch of Christians running around, and they seem powerful. The Christian coalition back in the 80s, uh, you know, influenced policy, influenced politicians. They had money. They would be on, on TV. They would uh, protest at movies. You see that now? When's the last time you saw the Christian coalition come up? When's the last time you saw somebody go, Wow, you know, we're going to shut down this movie theater because we, we think the movie's blasphemous. So I, I, I covered like nine blasphemous movies, I don't know, this month maybe? Uh, next, one's more blasphemous than the other. And nobody cares. <laughs> this is totally unrealistic. I, uh, I would have said no to this movie, and I would have said, go rewrite it. Go rewrite it in a way, rewrite it in a way that makes sense with the current reality, and then people might be scared. They might see, oh yeah, going down this path is a bad thing, as opposed to, oh yeah, this validates my opinions. You can't validate people's opinions in a horror movie. It conflicts with the horror. It doesn't make it scary. You're validating people's opinions. That makes them comfortable. Anyhow. Sorry, the trailer just annoyed me. And that's it for me, Tony D, Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for a more base takes. If you can find a more base take, I'd say take it. All right, I'm going to be here all week. I'm not doing an event until February 6th, and that one uh, is only for the residents. And then uh, February 10th, I'll be at I Love Horror, I Heart Horror in Sayreville, New Jersey. Hope to see you there. We'll see you.